Joining me now is Molly Hemingway, senior, senior editor at The Federalist and the Fox News contributor. Molly, um, you know, I know you always have some kick-ass, you know, analysis, but I think we're missing that he had Bruno Mars on there, he had Taylor Swift. I mean, we should be celebrating this, right? It is just amazing to see how much the State Department has been pushing the Spotify playlist. And it's not that I don't think Anthony Blinken has maybe good taste in music. <laughs> I just have no basis to believe that this is actually his Spotify playlist. Like, I don't think a grown man is listening to Taylor Swift right. and Olivia Rodrigo. I don't find it a very credible list for Blinken, who is supposedly a really good guitar player. You don't see that as evidenced in the list. But more importantly, like you said, we have all these major issues that our country is facing. And Blinken has had a really rough go of things. He had that really rough start with his first meeting with the Chinese officials where they embarrassed him and he came off weak. In general, weakness is a thing that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure Spotify playlist is the way to counter that image of weakness globally. No, seriously, and, and especially when you have Putin that is continuing to flex his muscles right now. For an administration that had so much experience and was going to say that America was back, it seems like America's kind of gone right now. It seems like all the enemies that feared us and respected us are now back to the Obama days. But maybe that's what they wanted. I don't think everything the Biden administration has done is awful in foreign policy. But he has quite a few failures. You know, what happened in Afghanistan was just a horrible thing that the entire country feels dishonor over. And weakness, like the weakness that the Biden administration has kind of presented on a platter, can be provocative. You might remember that Putin was not invading countries during the Trump era. He took advantage of, you know, neocon foreign policy, basically, to uh, to do his previous incursions, whether that was under Obama or now he seems to be threatening with Biden. He also, at the tail end of the George W. Bush presidency, tried that too. Um, we have really serious issues. And the State Department keeps pushing out this Spotify list. And it's, <laughs> it just makes you nervous because they're not just doing a bad job. They keep doing these things that are not serious at all. Yeah, it seems like they're always concerned about the image. Uh, of the secretary and, and the administration in general. You know, often the former president was criticized uh, of his words and his tone. But, you know, when you look at the president, former president, uh, what he said versus what he did policy-wise, there was a big difference, especially when it came to Russia. Very tough on Russia, probably the most sanctions that Russia has received in a modern time. But when his words, it was like, let's work together, let's work together. The Biden administration seems to have this flip. Talk tough, act weak. Yeah, and President Trump had a really impressive foreign policy. I think that that has not been, he has not gotten enough credit for how much good he did in moving us away from some of our interventionism that was causing mm -hmm. problems. And this is something where, you know, Biden has a lot of problems on his watch. And, um, We'd like to see the National Security Council and other entities engaged in foreign policy caring much more about actual action and less about image. And if they are going to care about image, please put out a better Spotify playlist than one that seems like it was focus grouped for hipsters. Yeah, because there was no hip hop, and I was a little sad about that. Anyway, Molly, thanks so much for coming on. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.